Welcome back. We're here with Suzanne Summers. Um, in, in Suzanne's book covers a lot of stuff. First of all, I, I do want to ask you about, about your breast cancer. You were very public about mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. recently, you did something that I'd never heard of about using your own stem cells. What did you do? I, um, at the time when they took my breast, I didn't want to have implants. I didn't want a foreign object in my body. I didn't want to do what they call a tram flap, which is where they cut a woman from side to side at her hip, take a muscle and a blood vessel and move it up here. There's no feeling. Right. The options for women are, 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 are really not very good. Not very good. Yeah. I heard um, uh, about a doctor in Japan at the University of uh, Tokyo, Dr. Kotaro Yoshimura, who had successfully regrown the breasts of over 400 Japanese women who had lost their breast to cancer. So I got a hold of him. I brought him over to America. I hooked him up with an American surgeon. And in August, it came through. In August, I was able to uh, have the surgery. They took fat from my stomach. Boo-hoo. <laughs> 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 OK, you can have it. <laughs> and this is Lay Speak um, in a centrifuge. Uh, at supersonic speed, they whipped out my stem cells, separated them, cleaned them, discarded the weak ones, took the strong ones, in, and put them in a small amount of that fat that they took from me. And with lack of a better term, a turkey baster took that concoction, injected into this breast, and a poof, you can see it, I have it on my um, YouTube show, it, it, they made it the size of the other one. It has feeling. It's soft. There are no scars. That's and extraordinary. I think it's the most incredible, exciting thing to happen in breast cancer in a long time. Nanotechnology and stem cells are where it's all going. Well, do, I mean, stem cells are obviously very controversial. Yeah. There's a, a lot of religious belief for people not wanting to. But to that's use. embryo. Do, 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 what, do you support the use of, of embryos? No. I um, did something, as you would, might imagine, uh, uh, four years ago. I banked my stem cells. You, they have found in our adult bone marrow that we have um, fetal, adult fetal stem cells. They're called V cells, very embryonic-like stem cells. So the day before they extracted these from me, they give you a shot of Neuprogen, which is a hormone that brings these embryonic stem cells out into your circulating blood. They put an IV in here. They take it out of one arm. They put an IV in here, and it goes through machinery <clears throat> that separates it again. And they banged about 35 bags of stem cells of mine, more than I can ever use in my life. Now, as progress happens, and it's happening exponentially, which is a word I learned from Ray Kurzweil, um, in the future, if I got in a car accident, if there was an anthrax attack, I've got little Suzanne's frozen on the East Coast and on the West Coast. <laughs> it cost me $7,500 and $300 a year for my fr freezing charges. That's where I like to spend my money on myself. Well, we have the satellite to uh, Ray Kurzweil, who oh, you God. talk about in the book. Oh, he's he's the joining us via satellite. Man. He's an inventor and an author and a futurist. Ray, thanks very much for, for being with us. Where is he? So, there he is. Uh, Hi. <laughs> Suzanne writes about, in the future, little robots being able to clear certain diseases out of our body. What, what do you see happening in the future in terms of health? Well, let me describe what you can do right now, where you can take uh, little nano devices, fill them with medication, and uh, actually put in, for example, cancer drugs and send them right to the tumor. This was actually done in human patients at MIT. Uh, this little d device, the size of blood cells, evaded the immune system, found the tumor, injected the medication, and then dissolved itself. Uh, and this actually worked in human trials. It was a small phase one trial. Are these nanobots uh, that you're talking the, about, Ray? Nanobots? These are, first, these are first generation of nanobots. They don't have computers in them today. They're not yet fully full robots. But if you look at the trends in technology, uh, this little computer, for example, is uh, a billion times more powerful per dollar than the computer I used when I was a student. Uh, this is thousands of times more powerful than that computer, which took up half a building. Uh, 25 years from now, this will be the size of a blood cell. Well, this is much computational power will fit in one of these little nanobots. So we, we will have little devices that, just like our white blood cells, can intelligently scout out pathogens, actually uh, find enemies. Uh, our immune system doesn't work against cancer. It thinks that that's you, so it doesn't recognize that as an enemy. Uh, we could have an intelligent immune system of these little robots that would recognize 
cancer and disease and uh, be able to download new software to rec uh, for new pathogens that were not, uh, didn't exist when the devices were first developed. Uh, so this will actually perfect the immune system and overcome the do, limitations. Do you worry at all that this that encourages has. somebody to kind of think, well, technology will kind of take care of me down the road and I don't have to kind of take care of myself right now? Well, I asked Ray that question. I, Ray is my lead interview in my book, Bombshell. By the way, you need to know, he was dubbed the smartest man on the planet by Bill Gates. We are talking to a true genius here and a national treasure. He, uh, I said to him, well, cool. If in 13 to 15 years we inject these little nanobots and it vaporizes arterial plaque and it turns on, uh, if you've got diabetes, it turns uh, on the islet cells, or do we turn them off or on? I forget, um, with, with a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what's the catch? And he said, you can't limp into it. You gotta get there healthy. Hmm. So, right, Ray? Well, the, well, well, that's right. You gotta get there for one thing. Uh, Suzanne and I are in our mid-60s. I think we both come out a good deal younger on biological aging tests. Uh, I, I would say the golden era of these new technologies, including the biological ones like stem cells, uh, genetic technologies, uh, is about 15, 20 years from now. So you want to get there. And uh, if you've already, for example, lost half of your brain through degenerative neurological diseases, you really can't re recreate that knowledge and those skills and those lost memories. Uh, the same thing is true of your body. There's certain types of uh, degeneration that's not reversible, even if we have the technologies to prevent so the and overcome new diseases. Key is now to so you, you want to get there in good shape. Yeah, so all the supplements I take and uh, the hormones and all the things that I do, I'm just getting ready so that when his nanobots are uh, how available. Many how many pills do you take a day? Like I don't take as much as Ray, but I take, um, I take, well, probably 90. What do you take, Ray? 90? Yeah, what do you take? Ray, how many do you take? I, I, I take 150. Uh, no, but uh, I'm going to give you this one thing about okay. your heart disease. Okay. This, this could save your life, honestly, and this is cheap. This is for all of you. What do we die of? We die of heart disease in this country. It's still number one, right. usually from atherosclerosis, the right. hardening of the arteries. Uh, and the older you get, the, uh, the, the, the more it advances. If you start taking vitamin K2 now, it keeps those arteries soft and pliable, and you may circumvent what might be a ge genetic predisposition. Okay. So take, what's, what do you got to lose? Vitamin K2, not K, K2. And that's a bombshell in uh, my book.